Hello, so I think I'm live. Uh, also, hopefully you can hear me fine because I just realized I never actually went live from this particular spot and particular device. But hey everyone, hope you are doing well. Um, I'll wait till the live stream catches on so you can tell me that you actually see me. I don't anticipate a lot of people being here, so it's going to be like nice and cozy. Um, yeah. Hello. Also, it's um, feeding time. <laughs> so if there's a lot of cats in the background, Logan's going to try and manage them. But like, have you tried managing cats before? <laughs> Not likely. Hey everyone, hi. Um, oh, there's people here. <laughs> I don't know, I'm so surprised. I don't know. I never know how many to expect because obviously when there's like reading clubs, you never know. Can you guys hear me fine? I'm currently wearing a lip mask and look like a fish. <laughs> a lip mask? <laughs> My mind just got like tiny bit blown. <laughs> oh Jade, hey! And hey, Bunny, and Crystal, and Hazel, and Courtney, um, Tina, and Zoe. Hi, everyone. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I was so afraid. <laughs> anyway, I've never actually done a live on YouTube alone before, I don't think. I will do go live on Instagram a lot, so it's probably going to be like pretty much the same as there. I will go through a couple of things before I go into the spoilery bit, so if you... I, I mean, I did put spoilers in the title, but I'm gonna keep it a tiny bit unspoilery to begin with, and then we can deep dive into it. Um, hello from Arizona. Hey, Dom. It looks so good. Thanks <laughs> for the tiny bit of effort. Um, there are all those jelly ones that are like face masks, but for your lips. lips. See, I did not know that existed. You guys constantly enlighten me. Hey, hey, AJ. Um, I'm so sorry. I don't know how well you can hear the cats, but can you? Um, I also got my tea, so excuse me from sipping that from time to time. I'm not being rude, I'm just being cold because it's December. Chantel, that's a beautiful name. Hi. Oh, hey, Momo. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, just a moment, I have strong thoughts on the book. Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, first of all, tell you all briefly what the next book is. I, I wish I could share my screen, but I think I've tried to check if there is an option for that, and there wasn't before. Um, so that's kind of crappy because it would be great for me to like show you the comments that I'm going to be reading. I haven't peeked once into the Goodreads comments, so it's going to be, I have no idea what the overall feel is. Knowing our book club is probably negative. <laughs> we have not had a great like run, but it's always fun because we have such a mixture of taste and I love that. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to be an um, unpopular opinion on this one, which is fun because I've actually usually mostly agree with all of you. But as I said, I haven't peeked in, so I don't know. Hello, Shreya. Oh, you guys have the coolest names. <laughs> okay. How many cats do you have? <laughs> too many. <laughs> no, two. I have two. They're brothers. Um, Okie doke. I'm jealous that AJ got a cat. Hello. <laughs> I think I think there's hellos for everyone. Can't remember half of the book, so I'm literally here for the spoilers. <laughs> that's that's fine. Um, okay, so yeah, let let me get there. Sorry, my brain's a bit. Um, yeah, you guys, if you don't know, the book club is basically that you guys get to pick what we read. So then, whatever the pick is. Obviously, I nominate a lot of books and then you guys pick. So this is just me being like, if it's bad, it's not my fault. It's yours. And Snow Like Ashes won last time. Actually, against quite like strong books. There was War Cross and Lifelike and Snow Like Ashes won. So, you know. Um, and this time I actually did it through a form, which was a great relief of me actually not going back and like counting, you know, manually. Much better than before. <laughs> um, and this one won. 
by a lot. Well, actually, yeah, by quite a bit. I think it was 32%. Actually, let me get my graph. So this is what I'm saying. I wish I could show you. So 32.5% was for Renegade. So this one, which won. So this is our next book for this month and January. And the live stream, I think, should be on the... 2nd of February because I think that's a Saturday but if anything changes I will let you know um <laughs> I can hear <laughs> I can hear look at me like oh, no, shut up <laughs> uh, um I'm just reading some I'm so scared people aren't going to like Renegades. You better be scared, Bunny. <laughs> I mean, it's not the shortest of the bunch. It's actually probably the longest, but you know, you got yourself to blame for that. It's 550 pages, but hopefully the pace is really good or something. So it goes really quick. Oh my God. I just opened the book. Like they really didn't leave any space <laughs> from the top to bottom. They just went for it. Hello, Natek. Sorry, I don't know if it's not how you pronounce it, but. It's how I pronounced it, so it's fine. Okay, and then the second place of that was 27.4%, and that was for Shatter Me. Third place was 17.8%, a big ship at the edge of the universe. So there's a lot of, so there was like, you know, a good chunk, a good competition. And then fourth place was the Wicker King with 15.2%, and 7.1% uh, was Early Riser, which didn't surprise me because it wasn't that known. Um, but yeah, so that is for the next one. Now let's go back to this one. Is it a book in a series or can people read it without having read her other books? Totally hoping that people can. I think it's definitely like it stands on itself because I have not read any of her. No, actually I read, um, Heartless, but that was a standalone and this one is not in her like series. Luna Krakos? Is, is that the same author? I feel like it is, but I'm not 100% sure. So it's that you de definitely don't need to read anything else to read that. Right, Bunny? I'm sure you'll tell us because you know better. <laughs> um, oh, I'm Tasha. Hi, Tasha. First book in a series. Cool. Um, yeah, moving on or moving back to Snow Like Ashes. So uh, I'm gonna, so this is the first time of me doing the live stream instead of a book diary. So I didn't actually take like proper notes when I was reading because I wanted to be like more natural. Um, but we still have the comments in the Goodreads group. So I'm gonna go through I don't know how many there are, but I'm gonna go through hopefully most of them and I haven't looked, so I don't know what the thoughts are. I'm gonna tell you my thoughts to begin with so I don't get swayed by yours because that's how I usually do it. Um, so I have my little, like <laughs> literally little uh, co-pile rating right here. Now I have to say that I think my opinion on this book was heavily influenced by the fact that I was reading it when I was um, on the train of like five hours, six hour train to London and then nine hour train back because there were delays and stuff. So I was, obviously I had like a phone with me and stuff, but I was basically, this was my entertainment and it did, it entertained me. And so I had quite a good time with it, but I have like mixed feelings because my rating, really does not reflect the quality I think this book is. So it's an odd one. <laughs> but they, basically when I came back after like two days or something, because I let myself like brew on it a little bit and just let it settle, I ran this through Copile. So let's all actually go ahead and do that. Let's all go through Copile with each other. So I'm just gonna go ahead and declare spoilers now. So if anyone's watching and they have not actually read the book, um, I would probably advise you to leave because I can obviously, and I trust you guys not to spoil things in the comments, but let's just all speak openly because obviously this is a book club, so we should just go ahead and do that. So if you're here for The Snow Like Ashes, but you haven't, well, if you're here for Snow Like Ashes and you read it, then please stay. <laughs> but, but if not, then we'll say goodbye now. I do have a 
long vlog going right after I finished the live. So if you're interested in some videos, there's going to be one right after this. Um, but Oh, first time Copal hasn't reflected feelings drama. <laughs> no, it reflected my feelings, just not the quality. Because I this those are my feelings pretty much that I enjoy this more than I feel like sh I should have, which you know I still enjoy this, so that's all that counts to me. But yeah, it, it's an it's an odd cookie. I know I don't know uh, a lot of your thoughts because as I said, I didn't look at it, but I know that Bunny you DNF this. <laughs> um if I had nothing else to read for a period of time, I maybe wouldn't have DNF'd it. Uh, I believe I gave this two stars. Oh, I failed miserably to read this. I'm just here to watch the live stream whilst I do some blog posts and Christmas wrapping, all that stuff. I just, well, I suppose if you don't mind the spoilers, then by all means do stay, because the more the merrier, but they, they probably got these spoilers. <laughs> um, so just before Copal, I think I'm gonna try and like remind everyone maybe, cause like I know Jade, you said that you don't remember much, which I should remember a little bit obviously cause I didn't read that that um, long ago. Okay, so this was in like shortened version of it. We start with our, so there's basically worlds and the map is separated by seasons, but also something else that I can't remember, because, uh, um, And our main girl is this uh, orphan that, of course, she's not an orphan, and she is basically in this complicated relationship that cannot ever be with her best friend, and they're all from the winter... Oh my god, how are they called? Basically from the winter part, and... Spring has invaded them, and they are just a few survivors, which I thought was the case, but apparently there's more survivors, they're just uh, imprisoned. Um, but they are in this camp with maybe like 10 other people, I think, and they have these conduits that give the seasons magic, and theirs has been shattered in two and then <laughs> taken away. Momo! Jesus. <laughs> um, What is the name of the book? Oh, sorry, it's Snow Like Ashes. Uh, Jade is saying I read it two years ago, but I think I give it four stars. Uh, I'm just here because your videos help soothe me to sleep. Oh, <laughs> well, that's sweet. Okay. Um, so yeah, and they're obviously going and trying to get those two pieces of the locket. So like, be brought together and get back the magic and then release and save their people. Um, I really did enjoy the world setting. It wasn't overwhelming, over, like overwhelming with details and stuff. And then basically she goes and gets like married off to some other place. What was it called? Cardell's? Was that the correct one? Basically people that can aid them to go and find their conduits but she wasn't told that she's gonna get married off to this person and so there's like obviously drama but then she's constantly being drilled to you have to do what's best for your people um and for someone who thinks that she's an orphan it's a little bit like okay why <laughs> um but then of course the whole like shebang is loose and then she goes and um gets captured and then she has these sort of messages told to her in her sort of dreams by this person uh, who is the last queen. Um, and we get to know the magic throughout these, and I really did like that bit. Um, what else happens? So basically she goes into the camp, uh, she messes shit up, she gets... The magic basically was all in her all along, and she is actually swapped with that guy that she was in love with and she is the heir to the winter thing not the guy very predictable the whole thing was very predictable and somehow i still enjoy it <laughs> so let us go through copile i know that was the worst like summarization of it but 
a girl did not know that she's uh, an heir to this kingdom, but she is. I feel like that this be was published, uh, was this published before this became a trope or after? Because <laughs> maybe this was like how it started. 2014 is probably after, isn't it? Um, so yeah. And we got this like a little bit of a love triangle going on, but I feel like the first one was simply because they've grown up together without anyone else being around the same age. And then she found this other guy whose name now I don't remember. I want to say Theon, but probably not. Um, I actually like him quite a bit. So I was a man and, and it wasn't like prolonged. Like it was fairly like, you know, she was like, yeah, I actually like this guy more. Um, is it only me or that the world is pretty similar to Court of Thrones and Roses? I mean, just from the fact that it's based on seasons, yes, it is similar to that to that extent. But I feel like that's been done so many times in other works that I don't know who did it first. <laughs> Thrones and Roses was definitely published after that, no? But like, I'm not saying this is original at all because I think it's been done a million of times. And it's funny because the, the, the thing that I was working on had pretty much the same thing. So <laughs> everyone's unoriginal. <laughs> um, Theron? That is the name, yes it is. Uh, So you're just getting back to the comments. Okay, so let's all collectively go through Copile and then we'll go through some of the comments and talk about our feelings. Um, and yeah, I want you guys to all like run it through Copile because that's fun and I want to see how many stars would that get you and if it's different from your normal rating. <laughs> let's do it, why not? Um, so, Let's go, let's do this. And then we, at the end, we can just like chat about random stuff because why not, you know? We'll see if we have time, but I'm sure we'll have time. Easy. <laughs> um, okay, so first of all, it's characters. Now, surprisingly, I really like the main character. I was, other than her being annoying sometimes, I really like the sort of sarcastic way of looking at things and life because she didn't really have a great life. She didn't have a horrible life compared to like some main characters, but there was a lot of uncertainty in her life. And I feel like there was this massive lack of family and feeling like you belong. And the way that she interacted with the world and the way that she shielded herself sometimes with like a really healthy amount of humor and sarcasm really spoke to me so i really enjoyed that and i also really enjoyed um her relationship with sir because it was very complicated i felt i felt like that guy was really afraid of getting too close and clearly he was hiding something and we know that he hid that he was the father of oh my god what is the main guy's name marin something I was half listening to the audiobook and half reading this. Um, Mather, which I really don't like the name because it just is too close to mother <laughs> to me in my head. Um, which I'm not gonna even speak about how messed up that is to basically raise a guy but not tell him that you're his father. And anyway. Um, so yeah, it was, I gave it like an eight now that I'm looking at it, but this like happens to me often. Like <laughs> I'll wait a little bit and I was like, oh, I probably should have been lower, but I'm just going to go with what I felt straight after reading this. So, you know, I gave it an eight because a lot of characters I really did enjoy. And I just like the way they joke. So I just like the sense of humor in it. Um, I know it's going to definitely not going to be for everyone though. Uh, what did you guys think out of 10? What are, where, where are the characters? How were they written? What, because I mainly enjoyed the interaction between the characters. Um, and that does not, 
exclude um, the mother from the, her dreams because I just, I just, I just like something was good about this book to me. <laughs> uh, then for atmosphere, um, I gave it eight point five because I thought the world building was actually quite good, and the second part of the book where uh, she's in the camp um, in the spring palace place i don't know um i really saw that vividly you know when they are going underground and they're going to meet up um i felt like i could see everything and i it, it was fairly atmospheric to me and whenever they were in like smaller groups in their own camps before she got taken away that was also like to me if i can imagine it clearly without being like oh my god all of these details to read through then i basically give it you know higher points for that but obviously it wasn't like mass masterfully written or anything so it's i still apparently gave it 8.5 though <laughs> um okay this is for characters i think uh jerry is saying i gave it a four i felt like i didn't get to know them well at all. It's fair enough. I gave it a five because I didn't really like the characters. I have a set scale I used, so I gave it a six. Um, lots of good things and a fair amount of bad things, but the former prevails. Uh, Jerry's saying I would give the atmosphere a six. I could mildly see it. I felt like there could be more details. Hey, Ali. <laughs> That's all very fair enough. I gave it um, an eight. Loved her sass. Yeah, me too. As I said, I felt like this was a very <laughs> weird time for me to read this because I was just like really in it when I was in the train. And I don't know if it kept my attention if I had other like million other things to do at home. Uh, I agree, the world building was my favorite part of the book. Noise. Okay, and then we go to the writing style. Um, I'm looking at my scores and I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> I gave it 7.5 and I'm like mainly certain that this was because of the humor inserted. I felt like it was the right places. It didn't, it felt very natural. I liked the dialogue. I liked the, again, very simple writing style that made me not get tired after all of these hours of reading on the train because I'm not a fast reader. So when a book that's a high fantasy doesn't get me super tired after like continuous reading, like the writing style is good. Either because it's simple and it's not too tiresome or because it's really entertaining and really well done that the sentences are amazing and they keep your attention even if they're not necessarily the easiest to read that's like strange to dream and muse of nightmares is what i'm thinking now but this was definitely the first one that was like simple and easy and i think for me sometimes that's just you know yes thank you <laughs> for the plot i really 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 like the decay part like plot wise I love that idea. I also really like, I know it's cheesy and I've said that in my wrap up. I know that the, um, the whole like locket thing and broken magic and the, you can't do anything without the locket is such a cliche and it's been done so many times. But ever since I was little, I love that kind of thing. So to me personally it was a win and i gave it an eight especially because of the sort of like open ended where the decay was destroyed but was it you know like was it really though because we have all of these this unsettling feeling first of all and no one really saw him die and the decay thing and how it was created and how it got into him um i just really I, I can't, I just really liked it. It was one of the main things why I really liked it was the whole magic thing coming together like little by little with the pieces of information. I like that a lot. Um, okay, seven on atmosphere for me. I quite liked the setup uh, of the world and there were a few bits I thought was quite vivid. Seven for the characters with nine for the atmosphere. I really enjoyed it. 
humor was very present in that book. I agree. And it was simple. Yep. I agree as well. Writing style three. Ooh, plot seven. Eight for me on writing style. I did enjoy the storyline. Really enjoyed it too. Uh, it's been quite a while since I read it, but I think I would give the writing style a four out of five. Um, or four or five, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, for some reason, MC calling the guy sir constantly bugged me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a weird one, but... Um, uh, Sasha saying, I was a fan of all the ideas, the world building and the twist. Uh, Rachel is saying, I think cliches are cliches for a reason. They can still be really enjoyable if they are presented well. Yeah, that was basically what I said in my wrap up. I felt like this is all of your tropes and all of the cliches put in one mix. And to me, somehow this was good. Um, another example that is an unpopular opinion is the Grisha trilogy. The first, the first book, because I haven't read the whole trilogy, but Shadow and Bone was like that to me. Like all of the cliches and tropes put together and did not work. Like every time it just grinded on me. I just couldn't. Sorry, I couldn't, couldn't get through it. Like I got through it, but like I was just so noping through all of it. And this, this time on this one, I was okay with it. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the humor. I think uh, Grisha Trilogy, the first one, tried to use humor as well. But it's always just such a hit or miss, but, you know. Um, okay, so Intrigue, then I gave it 7.5. And you can see, like, the <laughs> where this is leading. Because it's basically, like, 7 to 8 is, like, the main gap. Um, so, yeah, I feel like every category has, like, so many things that should be sort of not enjoyable, but then something in each category just brings it up. Like, it's overall so meh, but there's gonna be elements that just pump it up to like a higher score for me in this book. That's why it's so odd to me. It's an odd cookie, anyway. Um, so Intrigue, I put 7.5 because again, it was very easy test for me because I was on a train and I could have procrastinated on my phone, but I kept reading, so it's, really simple <laughs> i really didn't take any breaks i just you know sometimes i would but like not because it was bad i felt like it was definitely enough for me to keep going and literally that is all i needed from this um seven for intrigue someone saying as well um, um, um monsters and metaphor saying i think it would be would have been better if the whole plot twist wasn't a plot twist because it was already pretty obvious. Oh yeah, yeah, 100% agree. Uh, the whole plot twist of her being first a conduit for magic was so obvious from the beginning. And second, the air of the winter, so, so obvious. I definitely think they should have not made it to look like it should be a plot twist. Like, you know when they sometimes write and sometimes you already predict something and they just never mention that again and you're just like, it's just shown and you're like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm down. And then sometimes they clearly write in a way that you're supposed to be like, you know, mind blown and shocked when they finally reveal it even though you've known it from like the very beginning. So that is fairly annoying and I definitely agree. Uh, greetings from Poland, hello. Um, the humor makes a difference. Uh, I just finished Shadow and Bone and I can see what you mean. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you agree because that is not a popular opinion of mine. Uh, I struggled with Intrigue. I can say it was a super page turner. I can't say it was a super page turner, but then I did binge like half of the novel in one day. Uh, as soon as they said the conduit of winter has to be a female, I was like, <laughs> okay, that's her then. I know. I know, yeah, they were definitely, yeah, very predictable, as I said from the very beginning, super predictable, super tropey, super everything, and somehow I'm here. <laughs> uh, logic was 7.5, and with logic, I all usually, usually, if the book doesn't have a lot of stuff that's like, why, <laughs> you know, uh, usually this is where the books sort of like score high, because in logic, there's not a lot of things that I can you know put the points 
down four, but I did mock over 2.5 because it's so predictable. So it's purely for that reason, it's 2.5. Uh, so 7.5 sorry in total and then enjoyment it was an eight because again i kept reading and i enjoyed it and it was good fun it was so like non-committal it almost read like i know that this is like high fantasy but it almost read like a contemporary do you know what i mean like it was very laid back and i know a lot of um bad things and horrible scenes happen but to me it was still just like a breezy read, and I enjoyed it for that. Um, Jade is saying, this is all jogging my memory so much, I can really contribute to this conversation, but I'm enjoying. Okay, well, I'm glad that you're enjoying. <laughs> um, have you ever read the second one, Jade? Are you guys gonna read the second one? All of you? What do you think? Uh, Monsters and Metaphor saying, I agreed as well uh, with the thing about Shadow and Bone. It was a pretty big miss and I finished the series only so I could read King of Stars. Oh, man, see, I was always like, I will never read these, like the trilogy, but now the King of Scars is coming out and I'm like, why'd you do that to me? Why could it not just be like a continuation for like Six of Crows? Because I would love that, but because I love that. Six of Crows um, was like, okay. And then, um, oh my God, what's it called? Kingdom... Cook a Kingdom was so good. It's one of my favorites and I just want more. But now this is for like Grisha trilogy and now I'm like, do I do I actually read that now? It's so annoying. Because <laughs> I really don't wanna. I really did not enjoy the first one at all. Um Jerry saying five. I thought everything happened too easily. And Jaiman was a five too. Um Jay saying, not yet, that's for like reading the second one, but I want to. The Wild Sasha, read them all already. Oh, all of these or all of the Grisha ones? Sorry, I don't know which ones they're talking about now. If you read all of these already, are they good? <laughs> like the next ones, are they good? Because I would be happy to leave this here. I'm not like too... I mean, I'm happy con to continue. It's not like on top of my TBR by all means, but I'm... Like, I'm happy to leave this if it goes all downhill. <laughs> um, AJ saying, I picked up the second one as an easy, fun read for when I'm slumping or come off a tough read. So it is, isn't it? It's like a nice contemporary fantasy. <laughs> um, Chantel saying, I'm already on the second one. Ooh, how's it going? Uh, Danielle is saying, I kind of want to, but I'm not too sure yet. Same, same. Um, Bunny is saying, a friend is gifting me a signed copy of King of Scars, which means I need to read the sad series soon. <laughs> Good luck! Because, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Angela is saying, I have read the last book in the series for the newts. How was it? You guys, tell us, like, without spoilers, obviously, but was it good? Is it worth it? Um, what's the time over here? It is half past seven now. Um, maybe you can just read a summary for Shadows and, Shadow and Bone Trilogy. You know, I was thinking about that. Yeah. Because I know it follows, like, I, I, what I've heard of, that it follows Nina as well. So, you know, I want to know. <laughs> I might do that. I might find, like, a spoilery video for the whole series somewhere, like a book talk or something. But I might not understand half of the thing. So maybe I'll just go on, like, Wikipedia or something and just, like, spoil it all for myself. Because I don't want to read them. Um... Sasha saying the last one was my favorite thing than the first one uh, and then the second one. I feel like the second book in the series is always weaker for me. Mm -hmm. Other than Illuminate Files for me, Gemini I like the most and that was the second one. Uh, it's going all right and I'm enjoying it. I find it to be an easy read and I'm just flying through it. Yeah, it seems to be like a theme here. <laughs> so... Yeah, and all of that put together for me was like 55 and then divide, divided by 7, that was 7.85. That just, uh, right? It was just scraped. Wait, let me check my 
coal pile thing. Um, yeah, it was four stars. <laughs> like on the lower end of four stars, but four stars. Um, I thought it was 3.5. Again, a bit tropey, but it's a fun, easy read. I agree. Okay. 7.6. Wow. I just do. Oh, you mean like put together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 7.6 stars. It went over five. <laughs> I, don't know. I just crashed it in my mind a bit. That's okay. Okay, I am going to go now on to your comments on Goodreads. I have my. Um, page open, but I need to get your comments out. Okay. So we have sections like we always do, but that was when I still thought I'm going to do the book diary. So for the next, for the Renegades, I think I'm going to split it. I'm either going to split it in two. So, you know, first half and second half, or I'm just going to have like a general comment section, you know, in Goodreads group. What do you guys think? What would, what do you prefer? And then obviously, because I still want to read those thoughts here and I want you to guys to write those when you just finish. And I don't know when that's going to be so, you know, so you don't forget and stuff. Um, and then I'm going to be here and read those thoughts. So do you guys just want one big area for where you leave the thoughts for like Renegade or any other future books? Or do you want to split still in like first and second half maybe first and second half so then there's more like conversation between yourselves on what you think so it's not just when you read it yeah yeah let's let's do that nice conversation with myself sorry guys <laughs> um pi uh, 5.29 right in the middle of three stars it feel pretty average to me so about right feels yeah yeah um I love the split up comment section. Okay, I'll keep I'll keep that. I'll keep that. Yeah, I'll do more like um yeah. Yeah, okay. A lot of you guys are saying split ups. Um cool. Heard you. Let's do that. Let's just keep it that way. Maybe I'll add another section for the actual live streams. I'm just a bit conscious that I won't have all of the time in the live stream to read all of them. So maybe I'll keep the sections and I'll go through like a couple comments through the sections, but there's going to be like another uh, forum folder where you just leave the overall thoughts for the live stream. Does that sound reasonable? We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. It's good to have like the split sections for like no spoilers and stuff for the future stuff. So you can just keep talking with each other and maybe then I can go and peek in the sections <laughs> before the live as well so I know what you guys think okay so let's read some of the comments from um the first part so that was chapter 1 to 11 included um <laughs> this bunny just added that <laughs> bear picture with like how about no <laughs> okay um I can see you were hoping that it was going to be better than Last Namsara, which was very, like, poorly received in our group, I, think, I feel. Um, and then Bunny just noped out of it uh, because she's saying, we jump in the middle of the story. The main character is swoony-eyed over this prince we know nothing about, but he's the bestest best ever to best. <laughs> Uh, then when he's caught, she runs because she's not going to go down like this other character we know nothing about. She has too much to live for and the magic sparkly locket of magic and then a lot of no's and she said she's DNFing. <laughs> I, I absolutely, don't get me wrong, I absolutely understand why that would be the case. And I am surprised that for them, you know, how tropey and how everything it was, that it's still scored so highly uh but i don't like disagree with my like maybe three stars would be more reason reasonable for what it is in my mind but when i'm going through all of the copile categories i see why i gave the high score so you know it's an, it's an odd one um but i can definitely see it's not for everyone <laughs> um okay just checking if there's any comments okay um 
Then we have Danielle. Well, I have made it to chapter 13. I don't really know what I think yet. I feel like the world building is close to A Court of Thorns and Roses, but that could be because I just read the series before starting this book. There are just a few similarities. As for the love interest, it's not exactly insta-love or anything, but we start the book with the main character loving her best friend, who is supposed to be her king. But then when they have to abandon their camp, it kind of just jumps right into an arranged marriage deal that had no buildup of any kind. Uh, I'm not sure what to think about how that came into play. The Rhythm King is a jerk. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, you, he so was a jerk. Oh, my God. I'm not sure what I think of the main character. Don't get me wrong. I like her, but I just don't feel connected to the characters yet. The writing is decent. I want to like I want to like I want to like this book basically. It's not bad, but it's not that kind uh, of a can put it down good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like we now at this point obviously we didn't know that there was a build up for her like prearranged marriage. At that point it was really out of nowhere. So I can definitely see that that's definitely <laughs> correct and accurate. Um Oh yeah, I was wanting to say something. I can't remember his name, but you know the Rhythm King? Um, I sort of liked how that evolved into some sort of... Oh, it was so odd. Like him actually gradually letting his, his son take power out of him because he just screwed up so badly. I enjoyed that it wasn't just made into this like massive villain that he was actually um but sort of set aside instead of like killed or something you know so i sort of enjoy that you know like you can actually solve stuff without killing characters <laughs> because it's a family thing and families are dumb sometimes you know um when he's saying i am not having like with fantasy lately but hey you read Muse of nightmares that's a fantasy if i remember correctly you did love that no um <laughs> Brie just stopped in to say I love you and hello, hello. <laughs> um, Okie dokie. So I'm just reading what you guys are saying. I think you guys are talking about Harry Potter books at some point, but I might have missed something. <laughs> but I'm always down for that. Um, Okay. Sasha's saying, oh yes, the marriage. I remember I was like looking at Mooney and started talking to her. Mooney, what the heck happened? Mooney? Who's Moody? Oh my god. Well, I'm so lost. I don't know, uh, Benny's saying, I don't know uh, how I can love Muse of Nightmare Strange Dreamers so much when I have such fantasy problems. I know, but we are still going to convert you somehow someday. <laughs> Also, Renegades is a fantasy, so excuse you, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Like, obviously, it has, like, superheroes on the cover. <laughs> um, oh, Mooney's your dog! All right! I, for some reason, I just thought about the Marauders. <laughs> uh, do you know all conversation around you moves into Harry Potter eventually? I mean, it's not incorrect. <laughs> um, right. Next up, um, Kareem, Kareem, sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name as per usual, okay, she is saying, oh my god, this girl has no chill, and then there's some quotes, he's the kind of good looking that makes me physically ache, makes uh, me stumble for chairs when I, when I'm caught unawares, um, it took me four chapters to even learn and retain Mara's name and 12 chapters in, I still don't even like her. She is uh, slavering after boys, but wants to be a soldier, but she's not really that good at it. Thankfully, she can throw a weapon. I'll just stop there. I feel like you can do both, you know? <laughs> I, I know what you mean. And that swooning thing was really, really annoying me as well. I, mm, but to each so, you know, if she wants to be like that, that's fine. But it is annoying to read for the readers, usually. I feel like 90% of the time that's going to be annoying. Um, sorry, what was I? But yeah, like liking boys and wanting, or like girls, you know, we don't 
categorize here. <laughs> um, but liking someone and wanting to be tough, not exclusive, it's okay. Um, Thankfully, she can throw a weapon I've never heard of and didn't get an explanation for at all. <laughs> oh my god, that is so correct. I did have to Google what the hell that was. <laughs> I think it's like a, a similar thing that Cena had. Do you remember the show? Like, I think that was one of the things, right? Because I, I did not know the name of it, though, so I had to Google. But yeah, you're very correct. There was no explanation that I can remember. <laughs> Do you guys remember Cena, though? Wow. <laughs> There was that show for Cena, and they always used to show it with the Hercules one as well. Do you remember that? Or am I just old? <laughs> Maybe both. Um, and can inexplicably scale walls and tramp across roofs with uh, nary a thought that that's not addressed at all either. But uh, Bunny has really summed up my feelings of the whole Mather situation the first few chapters. I feel like there could be more to the story, but far the, oh, but so far the entire thing feels like I'm running at breakneck speeds through a half-baked story with no background information. How did Mira get scooped up uh, from her dead parents telling me Sir told you the story once, but not telling me the story isn't helpful? Those are very good points. I didn't pick up on that, but I did speed up through it. Not like speed up on purpose, but I did like read it very quickly. So I didn't maybe notice when the sections ended that I put in here, which next time I will mark it on the book. Because usually I do, you know, obviously when I'm filming the diaries, but um, that's a good point. Why is there a magic locket conduit? What's the history of that? I still don't understand the power structure of all these kingdoms, although it's starting to finally get fleshed out a bit more. Um, yeah, I feel like we got that information later. Um, so I'm not mad about that part, but the previous one was a very good point, I think. The writing seems pretty juvenile so far, and it's making it hard to understand or like the characters having random thoughts like the body of someone who was born holding a sword, which does not sound like fun for his mother. In the middle of a life-threatening crisis just really pulls me out of the story. <laughs> See, for me, it is 100% accurate of what I would probably think. <laughs> like, I have these thoughts. I have these, like, stupid thoughts constantly and it doesn't matter this what the seriousness of the situation is but that's what i was saying i feel like the humor is going to be very much hit or miss in here so i definitely get why you would not like that <laughs> um sorry, i lost my thought let's, let's go into the comments here <laughs> and check what's happening um okay Oh, Bunny, you read Renegades twice? Well, hopefully you're going to reread the third time now with us. <laughs> um, you didn't vote for it because you didn't want people to hate it. Oh, is it going to be one of those things where you just, just look away or just like don't listen to it when people criticize it? <laughs> um, I googled it too, that's what the weapons. Oh, Jade is saying, if you love Renegades Bunny, then I am pumped. Yeah, I feel like, Bunny, if you like a fantasy, then, like, the chances are we're gonna like it as well. I think the thing on the front cover is a weapon. Oh, my God. You are so right. I did not even catch that. Like, that's the thing. That's the thing she throws. That... <laughs> I don't know, I just I just always saw it as like a part of the cover, but you are so 100% correct. That is the thing. How are they called? I can't remember, but like, you're so correct. Uh. Uh, oh, I lost my place. Sorry, guys. Heck yeah, Xena and Hercules were my jam. <laughs> I feel like it's more a teen book than YA. Xena was brilliant and Hercules hot. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have a large glass of wine ready for the Renegades live stream just in case. I feel like it's a good idea. I mean, you know, if other people don't enjoy it, it doesn't have to reflect on your enjoyment at all. Um, thank you for mentioning that about romance and badassery. I did find her obsession with boys kind of annoying, but we need to stop the idea that badass women can have relationships. Yeah, I think so. Uh, oh, just jumped somewhere. 
She is 16, so I get the boy crazy stuff. I kept forgetting they were 16. See, that's the thing. When I read books, like, <laughs> I know it says in the book how old they are, but I always just sort of put them closer to my age in my head because it makes the book um, more fun to me. I just do it. I don't do it on purpose, but I just found that I do it. And I don't fix myself. Like, I don't correct myself. Uh, like, in Crooked Kingdom and Six of Crows, they're all, like, 17 or something. But nor do they act or talk or think like 17-year-old me used to. Um, so, so sometimes it makes more sense to me to just, like, transform them in the age that I'm comfortable them being in, you know. Um, but, yeah, they, she did definitely think and do stuff like a 16-year-old. <laughs> Oh, AJ literally said that. I kept aging them up, although I think I always do that nowadays. I do that as well. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, fantasy 16 should be different from modern 16. I mean, I feel like, yeah, but you know, with the hormones, I feel like they don't care what the setting is. Um, uh, love it, we'll do that for the quarterly book club. When is the live show? for that, by the way. Hmm, when is the live show? January 26th, I want to say. I hope. Um, okay. We definitely have the same sense of humor. I laughed at that mother thing as well. <laughs> Let him love the only one. Um, Okay. Okay, let's go back. Oh yeah, it is January 26th. Hurrah. Okay. Um I really hope Mera and Matha grow up a bit and get over themselves. Theron is the first character I actually kind of like, but it's still early days. And Mera, stop gawking at men with <laughs> their shirts off and going on about their abs, you perv. <laughs> I get ya, I get ya. Okay, then there is Megan. She is saying, just got to the end of chapter 12, and who oh boy, I'm angry at almost all the men in the story. Why did no one talk to her first? What the actual insert curse words <laughs> i am so baffled and confused even when sir don't even get me started on that try to explain it to her it, it was not really an explanation for god's sake i know the marriage treaties are a thing a stupid messed up thing but a thing nonetheless but these people seem to at least in some kind of way care about this girl and they didn't even try to tell her before dropping her in the deep no yeah yeah it is a bit like i got i got it afterwards but like still really really annoying um apart from that i'm honestly not hating it but there's a lot that annoys me i keep being pulled out by the place names and uh as being a derivative naming system but it's also funny because i used a very similar naming system in a story i wrote ages ago and i feel really dumb now because reading it in another story uh feels kind of convulsive oh my god literally same <laughs> Because I had not only my story, I've never heard of this book at that point when I was like uh, much younger and I was writing some other stuff as well. Not only that I also had like the map separated by the seasons and seasons did not move, but I also had an, like the locket, like the amulet thing. <laughs> and now, yeah, anyway. Um, so a very good point. And okay, let's go back to Sir, because Sir is not a name. Sir is a title. Even in the story, it is explicitly said to be a title. And yet the narr narration uses it as a name, and I just, why? <laughs> I could understand Mary calling him Sir in dialogue, which would there, uh, thereby make any time she uses his name, his actual name, which I still don't remember properly, much more powerful. But man, it throws me every time. <laughs> but anyway, I'm reading this half physically and half on audiobook. Oh, same. Um... And the audiobook is actually quite decent. I agree. The audiobook was really decent. It wasn't like the best thing I've ever heard, but it was definitely decent. And I also swapped literally like 50-50 on reading and listening. Um, it is helping me get through a lot of the parts that I would have thrown the book at the wall to. Anyway, I'm glad it, it, I chose to listen to it as well as uh, reading. 
I like the narrator and that's important too. So yeah. Um, someone replied to that. I surprisingly don't mind this sort of thing so much, but yeah, the whole male lack of consideration is really annoying. Then we have Jerry. If I had to sum up the first 11 chapters with one word, it would be meh. I'm not feeling attached to the characters or the story yet. I find a lot of things not making sense to me. Like why Mera can win a series of fake sword fights against her friend, but has been the only successful soldier to find and take the locket half while uh, meeting Spring's biggest, badass fighter. Also, why Mera can marry Mather, a future king who she grew up with, but is forced to marry Thera, a future king in another kingdom. Yeah, that, that is a very big flaw, I feel. Because he constantly told her that she can't because of, you know, the difference and the royalty. And I think she asked that herself in the book. She was like, what the hell? <laughs> Guys, what the hell? Um, and I think the way that she took the locket wasn't necessarily the fighting skills, more just like being sneaky-beaky and just going into the sewers. <laughs> um... I feel like a lot of us say in the comments here that they adjust the ages in their heads as well. I feel like they should just not bother writing their actual age in there at this point. We're just, we're just gonna make stuff up either way, aren't we? Um, I have a really hard time reading the same book both physically and listening. You know, I actually, this was my first time, I think, no. But it's definitely the first time I consistently swapped from like physical to audio. I didn't do it both because I don't do that. I feel like beats the point. <laughs> but um, so I don't listen and read at the same time. But I would listen uh, and then stop at like a certain chapter and then read for a bit. And it really helped me. So I basically started uh, in the physical form. So I would get... Well, first of all, I listened to the sample of the narration to see if I can understand and if I like the narrator, because that means a lot to me. And then I did. So I started reading it so I know what sort of is going on and who is who. And then I swapped to audiobook because like sometimes it saves time, especially if I'm doing something and I can't physically read. And then I would swap back. So I feel like whenever, because now I sort of just save audiobooks to um, continuations of the stories. Because I feel like if it's a fantasy, that doesn't apply to any other ones, but if it's a fantasy, I really need more comprehension. And I get that by reading physically. But if I swap now, I notice that that's okay. So if I get the ground rules, I can swap and understand and not, you know, get lost in the world. And yeah, I might, I might try doing the half seas in the future again, because now I'm sort of locked myself into this... Um, sort of, you know, only listening to the sequels of the books, which is fine as well, but that also really depends if I have a credit somewhere to use, or because this one was on script, so that was great, but if I need to use like an actual credit on Audible, because now I'm using both, um, then I probably won't do that because I obviously already paid for this, so I don't want to like double pay for the book and the audiobook. But if you can find it in a library or if you can get a physical copy in a library, which I might just do that. This was not the topic. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes that just happens. I'll just start talking about random stuff. Um, okay. Uh, but he's saying, I've just started doing the audio and physical at the same time. I like it, but it's not something I could do all the time. It messes with my brain. I actually really enjoyed it because I can still... One thing that I really enjoy about physical is that I can give the voices and I can do the intonations. And when once I establish the voice of a certain character, even if the narrator is reading it in a slightly different way, I'll hear it the way that I should feel it, you know? That was an interesting sentence. You know what I mean? I started writing a book as a kid that revolved around a magical pendant and went ever went anywhere but <laughs> see i feel like it's a thing it's a thing isn't it um i've done it a few times but every time i ended up just swapping to the audiobook 100 percent. oh interesting i did the same thing with the raven boys Ooh, interesting with this one, I did swap until about two thirds through and then just listened to the audiobook at the end. 
Makes sense, makes sense. <clears throat> a side note, I have three credits to use. If anyone has audiobook suggestions, people give AJ good audiobook suggestions. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Angela just recommended you AJ Brandon Sanderson. I don't know if you know Angela, but he's like the biggest fan of Brandon Sanderson. There's nothing he has not read yet. That's probably not true. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, then just do that. The name of the win. Yes. I actually haven't listened to the audiobook. I'm just like too scared. Sometimes if I have a lot of love to a book, I'll just not accept anyone else reading it but myself. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to the comments. Oh, I just noticed the time. Oh, great. <laughs> See, this is why I needed to all be in one place. Um, I'll just carry on this time. I'm not going to go through everything, though. But I'm just going to carry on. Um, and I'll time myself a little bit better next time. Uh, so I hope you guys don't mind staying a bit longer. Or if you want to go, obviously, that's fine. And thank you so much for stopping. Um, Name of the wind is a goal for next year. Bunny, yes, please, please. <laughs> oh my God, if you hate it, it'll be so sad. I'm actually like, my goal is as well to reread that in 2019, which I'm afraid of because when it, it's always going to mean something special to me because it took me out of this massive slump. But at the same time, I'm afraid to reread it at this point since I've read so many other books. Um, what if I don't like it as much? Which is fine, but you know, scared. <laughs> Um, okay, Brittany is saying, this is fun, enjoyable read so far for me. It has vivid world building that I find very easy to picture and enhances the story. Even with this complex world building with all the different kingdoms, the story seems to be very easy, some, somewhat predictable read that I look forward to continuing. I do see and, uh, and understand where everyone is saying there are multiple tropes and I'm okay with them so far as... Uh, for me, they do not take away from the story. They are being done in such a way as it is making the story intriguing and I want to know more. So we did have a positive person in there. Not positive person, person who loved it. Um, okay, let's go into the other section now. I'm just going to like randomly select a couple from each section so that we can wrap this up. I'm so sorry, guys. I just went on like speaking about audiobooks, but I want this to be like, you know, organic. So that that's gonna happen. Um, so Megan is the first comment on the chapter 20, 12 to 22. Uh, and it just says, I just sigh. <laughs> I gotta give it to this book for somehow keeping me utterly hooked despite the many things that annoy me about it. At this point, I'm just pushing myself through just because I want answers. I mean, yeah, still push through though, like, huh? It's interesting. Um, okay, Jennifer is saying, okay, the battle scene was fantastic. My son and I were listening, he's 11, in the car and both of us were leaned forward. Oh, I hope you weren't driving. <laughs> I feel a connection to the cause after chapter 22. I'm a historian and I specialize in World War II. And this last chapter reminded me of the way they use mental torture in the camps to break down hope and dehumanize people. Oh yeah, that was such a good, like, well, not good, but the, you know, it was so raw how they used another person's um suffering to break you that was intense um it's not a five for me but i'm really curious about the power i have a ton of questions that need to be answered and want to fast forward to figure it out which doesn't work on an audiobook <laughs> um okay duke I think there's audiobook stuff going on in the chat. Okay. Hi, Natalia, saying hi, I'm new. Hello, welcome. <laughs> um, 
Jerry saying the book got slightly more interesting in this section, but not much. I'm glad things picked up a little. The confrontation battle and Mira getting captured kept my attention better than the first section. I have to say, though, I felt absolutely nothing when Sir died. Oh, I actually did feel some things, <laughs> which is, like, unusual for me. I didn't cry or anything, but was sad. Um, what's sadder though is that in every stupid book they bring up people who die. I'm like, why would you do that? Like, it just gets me. Like, just leave them dead, you know? Like, let's not let's not talk about that now. I'm not sure where was enough character development for me to feel emotional. There was sorry uh, about his death. I appreciate the World War II reference and um, interesting to learn more about the camp's escape plan. Uh, AG saying, I'll echo the thoughts of most here that this section definitely drew me in a little bit more. I don't think the book will be anything above a three star for me, but it's still enjoyable enough and I'm not struggling to read it. I've read all of this part in one sitting and think I might push through and finish the next part tonight too. I'm a little confused about how the magic works in this world. I thought each kingdom had a different power and Cordell's was up opportunity or something. Then Theron said they had put a lot of power into defense too. Not sure if I missed something there, but was happy when we got this scene explaining how the artifacts were created, kind of similar to the rings from Lord of the Rings. I think the Cordells had a power to amplify strength. I think they all basically do the similar thing, like to just give strength. And uh, I think it's just up to the person where they distribute that is how I took it. <clears throat> Jade is like, oh my god, I forgot he died. <laughs> well, he didn't because he got brought back, so it's all fine, you know? Oh, I hate when they do that. I honestly just really do. Um, I mean, like, most of the time I'm happy that the characters are back alive, but I also am one of those people who's just like, if he did, you did, you know? Like, unless there's, like, there's some places and some times that I'm like, okay, I'm happy this happened, but most of the time, if you kill someone, if you make me go through some sort of emotional feeling, you can't just do backseas, you know? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, Brittany saying, this is a very much an enjoyable read for me. I keep finding myself wanting to dive back into the story whenever I have to put the book down. Uh, I agree with the other comments here and that I was drawn in by this section. <clears throat> that said, it is still a bit on the simplistic side for me and I'm okay with that. Basically my thoughts. <laughs> Brittany is basically say what I thought as well. Even with not fully fleshed out plot, at times it has a relatively easy flow to be uh, to the writing and I find I am flying through the story and wanting to see what happens next. Uh, I also, oh also, is it just me or does this feel like the author took bits and pieces of all her favorite stories and experiences and put them all in here? Uh, yeah, 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 it does, it does. <laughs> um, Okay, and now into the 23 to the end. Um, so I feel like there in the middle there was this like general consensus that just got a little bit better. Um, Momo. Oh, I do think since my comment didn't get read, I'll just add this here. Uh, the author has clearly been watching too much Cena Warrior Princess because that's not really how chakrams work in real life. The actual warriors who use them used to have uh, like four or five on each arm that they would throw into a fight. So they basically don't come back like boomerangs, right? <laughs> um, There's a lot of people saying they really don't like when people die and then get resurrected as well. Okay, so the final thoughts. I'm just gonna like jump in a couple of comments here or like general feels. Uh, so Megan is saying, okay, I just finished the book. I was admittedly hooked through the most of the book, but I finally realized what bothered me the most about the writing style. And that was, I feel there wasn't a good balance of show, don't tell. I feel like there were many times where after a long while of hints and nudges, all of a sudden the whole thing was over explained. That makes sense. That makes sense. Overall, she rated it three stars, kind of on the low side, but she can't ignore how much she was hooked by the issues. Interesting. I feel also like similarly, like I was, you know, 
I acknowledge that there's a lot of stuff that's like, eh, but I still like read it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Um, 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 um okay karen is saying the range matter seemed a bit uh like a plot device and sir would have known uh, at least in terms of an alliance a prince was a good match for his queen i guess still seems like a bit of a stretch also how did he expect two conduit holders to live in the same place when they both have to rule over their own kingdoms um, um she's glad the hormones got tamed down a bit after uh, the main character was captured. Uh, it made the story more bearable for her. <laughs> Overall, she's saying, I'm kind of meh on the whole thing. I think I might try reading the second one since it's out and I don't have anything pressing to read, but I think if the next book hadn't already been published, I wouldn't revisit the story. I'm disappointing though, since the synopsis really sounded like something I would enjoy and I'm obsessed with this cover art. I'm losing my voice, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> Okay, and I think you guys like spoke a lot with between each other, which I love seeing. And I'll read that after the live, I think. Um, <laughs> Jennifer is saying, I knew it. Sorry, haven't finished the book yet, but I was so excited that I'd guess who Mera was that I had to come on here and share. Okay, back to the book. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, and then she came back saying, okay, I finished. Just listen to the audiobook so I'm with Megan about her being super creepy. The narration was pretty well done when it comes uh, to 10 sections and her had come off as a rapey sadist Ooh, that made my skin crawl. I feel like Sir may have made the marriage alliance simply to get help from Cordell to get to the locket half and winter back because uh, Karen brought up the excellent point of conduits not working away from their chasm. I wonder though, if Mary is a conduit and the chasm is under the land, can she conduit anywhere? I gave the book three stars. The world building was good, but close to the overall, oh, close to the overkill of Game of Thrones, though I love that series. And I was irritated by Mary's kid in candy store hoardiness. <laughs> <laughs> the romance with both Matter and the prince didn't seem fully formed to me for some reason. Kind of forced? I don't know. I do feel like I will pick up the second book though, maybe for a Christmas read. So I'm super excited for that. I'm very excited for that as well. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna stop here mainly because my voice is going. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I haven't read your comment out loud here, but I will definitely read them silently after <laughs> the live stream but yeah those are the overall thoughts i feel like we all sort of agree that it definitely has issues and some were bothered by that a bit more than others um you guys know what my thoughts are pretty much because i kept repeating them but yeah thank you so much for joining if you guys did are you guys excited for the renegades one i actually have no clue what this is about because i like 50 not 50, like 70% of the time I like don't read the synopsis or know literally nothing about <laughs> that book. So this is pretty much that for me on this one. I just know that it's like superhero stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, did you guys enjoy the live stream format of this? Because I think this is how it's going to go because I really prefer it. I, I love vlogging, but if I vlog, the book diaries than I don't normally vlog and it just really clashes with everything so um, I'm really up for more lives instead um, and I will keep the Goodreads as I said similarly how it is now I'll just add a separate like an additional folder for live stream thoughts <laughs> um so yeah let me know how you feel about the live streams oh i clicked something and thank you so very much for hanging out with me and uh i will definitely leave these on so anyone can watch these afterwards if they so fancy um yep i like this it's good getting to chat actually live yeah i agree I like the live stream format a lot. I love this format. Okay, that's good. Good feedback. <laughs> good feedback is good. Um, yeah. 
Oh, this was my first book in a jar and I really enjoyed taking part and loved the live stream. Yay! So glad you joined. I hope you join again in the future. Maybe next time. <laughs> Hello, future readers of this chat. See, I never, I don't remember if the chat is actually shown afterwards because sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Who knows? Um, yeah, I hope your Sunday is gonna be good if you still have any left because it's like 15 past eight now so for me it's not much but still a little bit uh, i will post a vlog now just literally when i'll stop this i'll post a vlog if you still want to watch something um thank you so so much for hanging out i think i'm just gonna end it here because we're already sort of like over the hour limit it's not like a limit but you know it's like a attention span limit. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. I'll let you know if the date changes from the 2nd of February or not. Um, but yeah, thank you. And I'll see you next time. Bye.